McDonald to deep left field. Hamilton back at the wall. Off the wall! Welcome to Boston, Darnell McDonald. The Red Sox newest hero. Driven to deep left center. Way back and gone. First as a Cub for Darnell McDonald. So imagine if we could uh, focus on the baseball or focus on anything that we're doing. That's a superpower. So this is a superpower that we have. We can develop this skill of being present, being in the moment. High drive, deep left. He's got another deep, far, and very gone. Arnold McDonald takes him out of the yard, and the Red Sox lead it one to nothing. You are tuning in to an all-new edition of Calm is a Superpower, a baseball podcast powered by SVA Sports at Yaya Sport here at SVA Sport. We are looking to help you find your purpose, navigate your way through life. You can head on over to svasport.com for more information. Again, this is Calm is a Superpower hosted by Jack and D-Mac. It's episode four of the podcast with a very special guest, a very special treat for you today. We have former major League Baseball first baseman James Loney on the podcast. You might remember him from his days with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Also played for the Boston Red Sox, Tampa Bay Rays, and New York Mets. Spent a little time in the Korean baseball organization as well before he hung it up. But we had a very fun chat today with James Loney talking about different ways we can incorporate really fun entertaining content uh, for fans across the globe watching Major League Baseball. Not just on ESPN. We talked a little bit about the K-Rod cast that they're having with Michael K and Alex Rodriguez on ESPN. Talked a little John Boy Media, Barstool Sports, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what we can incorporate in the future when it comes to sports media as a whole, not only on ESPN and Fox Sports broadcasts and professional broadcasts alike, but also with fun stuff that you can make content creation uh, at home, on your own, forever. Whoever wants to get into the content creation business, it's it's kicking ass these days. So you want to get into it. Uh, we talked a little bit about that as well as what he did during his playing days to not only meditate, stay calm, but to uh, perform at the biggest level that he possibly could. So without further ado, it is episode four of Calm is a Superpower. We are presented by SVA Sport with Mr. James Loney. Enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Do you like the broadcast style or like I think obviously podcasts are the future? Yeah. percent. Like, and this is like way more relaxed. But like, do you like, like being there in the studio, dressing up and analyzing things? Yeah. I mean, I like it. I mean, I like just kind of giving my take and being able to, you know, I think provide some information that, you know, most people can't or, you know, seeing something that, you know, most people might not see and being able to explain it, you know? Um, Cause this one, I, I was telling you earlier, I just watch some of these guys and it's like, it's just so boring, man. Or that they just repeat the same stuff that they hear. Um, so you're talking like, about like the like guys like you who played like the analysts or just like in general, just like the broadcast teams. Well, I, I I think both, honestly. Yeah. You know. Well, to be uh, fair, we didn't play like you guys did, so we have to, <laughs> and it's up to you to be entertaining. Right. Exactly. Exactly. No, I know. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, it's not even necessarily always what you say, right? It's how you say it. Oh yeah. You know. It's just like the energy you're giving off because, you know, usually like if you're watching the news, it's like, all right, if I want to watch the news, I want to like, be a little entertained, you know, it didn't have to be crazy, but I don't want it to like be a snooze fest. The thing is like what they teach us, like at least what I learned in school too, is that like, it's not about you, like tell the story, but like, don't develop like this character. They're not tuning in to listen to you. So like, I feel like some of that yeah. comes from like, just do your job, tell what's in front of you. Like, don't, don't be, don't be a character. Right. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Cause that's what they're, you're trying to give information. Yeah. yeah. Which makes sense. But at the same time, you're right. Like you want to be entertained, which I think yeah. you're doing like a decent job. So interesting. Like just watching Sunday Night Baseball the last two weeks. Have you guys seen the K-Rod thing with Michael K and Alex Rodriguez? I saw part of it. I mean, I wasn't, I mean, you know, the part I saw was just kind of whatever. What would you think? Well, that's the, so like Eli Manning and Peyton Manning's Monday Night Football thing. Also, I like that. You know, because they're brothers, you know. They've yeah, been like their lives since day one. They have oh. chemistry. We're like, yeah, like A-Rod and Michael K, it's just a weird 
two people to pair together. Like yeah. if you put like David Ortiz with A-Rod, I think that would be a lot more interesting. Right, exactly. I feel, I feel like they always have to, I don't know. I mean, you got to pair with the right guy. Like, like I like Carl Ravitch, you know, I like him. Um, I like Robert Flores from MLB Network, yeah. you know? So like th there are certain guys, even though they're not the baseball guy, they're just, they're, you like watching them. Oh, I think, uh, who's the other one? Steven Nelson with MLB Network does a tremendous job of like inserting his personality and okay. interacting with guys. Yeah. You know, like there's that, that perfect mix of like, you're not making it about yourself, but you're making it fun for the viewer to watch. Yeah. Because exactly. you can relate to them. Yeah. I've heard, um, I heard the Apple TV didn't go too well. Um, the commentators on that. Did you hear about that? Who was it? I think it was Hunter Pence and like some, some lady. And then I think Heidi Watney. Yeah. Um, and then I know Chris Young did another. I don't know if his was, I don't know if they were talking about his, but this was a separate broadcast. Interesting. And I think they had two, two women on that one as well. Yeah, I, I know Chris has been working with like, like Melanie Newman and maybe Heidi Watney. So yeah. I saw he did a game this weekend just like in like a Jackie Robinson jersey wearing sweatpants and stuff. Yeah. Like, very laid back. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was it. So, um, I mean, I'm all for like inclusiveness and women and everything, but it's like it's got to be the right content, right? Because if it's not the right content, then people are like, it's just not going to come off, you know? But, like, the Jessica Mendoza, I think, from what I've seen, she, I think she does a pretty good job. Well, she, um, she played softball at, like, she, some big level. Like, she, yeah. she has an idea of what she's talking about. Like, it's exactly. not like you're just throwing someone out there. Like, a lot of people still today are just like, oh, she has no idea what she's talking about. It's like, she does. Like, give her a chance. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not as easy as you think it is. Right. No, I know. I know. But I've, I've, heard her, I've heard her break down some stuff, and it's been pretty good from what I saw. So. C-Mac, you think you could ever do commentary? Do you ever want to? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just listening. I'm listening to you guys because I'm, what I'm hearing is like there's, there's obviously an art to it, right? There's strategies behind it. Um, it's not something like I think a lot of people think, yeah, man, just put a camera in front of me and I'll just, just do what it. No, you have to like prepare and, 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 mm -hmm. and there's a lot of stuff that goes on before you get on there, but I think just the authenticity and having the right people together, right? Yeah. I, I think for baseball, I, I haven't seen it yet, right? Like mm -hmm. there's someone, you know, really good and then the other person kind of dulls it down, dumbs it down. Um, or I think like Jessica Mendoza, I think she's really good. I also feel that like female, like I have to really do more and prove like I'm, I'm I really know baseball where it's just like, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the basketball setup to be honest with you and the, you know, females and the males. And I'm trying to think uh, yesterday, man, just, is it TNT or TBS that Shaq and those guys? TNT. Yeah, man. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Like, I'll stay up just to watch that because it's just real. Like they, right? They talk shit with each other. They they state the real like about the game or players. And mm -hmm. um, I think they have the right combination of the the kind of techniques of what needs to happen. And then um, you know, Shaq is keeps it real. He mm -hmm. checks Barkley. Like, there's a lot of – there's a good checks and balances through it, through it all. It works. Yeah. Yeah, I think baseball sometimes gets a little – I don't want to say scared or apprehensive, but, you know, it's very like, okay, I'm just going to say this or I'm just going to say that and stay in my little box, you know, versus like, like sometimes you just got to, you know, see what, see what happens. <laughs> yeah. I think you guys like that, like – Paul O'Neill with the Yankees, he, he, he doesn't have any Fs to give. Like, he, he goes out there and says whatever he wants, and he knows what he's talking about because he was a big-time, big-league hitter. And he can analyze yeah. when he has to, but he can have fun when he has to, too. Mm -hmm. Or, like, some, like, even, like, a David Cohn, like, really good at analyzing things. To me, I feel like he tries to, like, insert way too much personality and it just doesn't work. Mm. Yeah, I haven't heard him enough. 
I, I was actually surprised when I saw him on ESPN the other night. Um, I just haven't really like heard him enough, or you know. I think he's doing all the Sunday night games this year with Carl Ravage and uh, Eduardo. Oh, it is. So. Eduardo, yeah. Hmm. Eduardo, yeah. he keeps it relaxed. Yeah. Oh, Eduardo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eduardo. Yeah. Awesome. Knowledge. He has knowledge, and he has like he has an unbiased. You can feel like he just you know speaking mm -hmm. the game yeah so you need to put eduardo with a uh um a person that don't give a damn okay mm -hmm. big pop yeah. big pop he's good it's authentic half the time you don't know what he's saying but it's you know, <laughs> authentic, so it's funny um and that per you know that personality so i mean who else like i try to think like in baseball like swisher Oh, I haven't seen him. Where, where is he? Well, he he's done some work for like Fox Sports, just like sitting behind the desk for like pre and post game. But I'd love oh, yeah. to the color commentary. Yeah, He'd I've seen him game. pre and post. Don uh, Trell is another guy who does pre and post that I think is yeah. really good. I like Don Trell. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish sometimes in baseball now, like the way the games play, I wouldn't mind seeing commentators or analysts kind of you know, saying what they think is going to happen beforehand, right? Be like, oh, okay, in this situation, you know, like, like put it, put it out there. You know, you know, you guys have these jobs, and so like, like let's see if you really, you know, have an idea here, right? Versus always after the fact. You know, I don't know. Kind of like I, what Tony Romo does constantly on CBS. You know? Yeah, yeah, he does. Like, like, what's going to happen, Tony? And then like literally seven times eight times out of ten he's right and it's like right wow, it's like really cool like really insightful like that's entertaining exactly. yeah you're not going to be right every time but at least like it's kind of cool to, like over time people will know if you're if you know what you're talking about oh my god 100 percent. you know so game games change if you played the game you don't know what you're talking about so <laughs> that ain't gonna that ain't gonna work but no, I love the Romo and the stories and the insight, man. I'm like, yeah, I want to hear that. Like, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have enough of that in bait. Like, to be honest with you, I don't even like watching. Like, if I watch a game, just turn turn that off, turn it off. Yeah. You yeah. No, I hear you. I don't even, like, I don't even really watch. I mean, I might watch the end of some games sometimes if it's close games. But for the most part, like, it's, yeah, it's hard for me to watch, like, a full commentary game, you know. I think we're going to see more along the lines in the future of like the K-Rod thing where it's like very laid back as opposed mm -hmm. to like suit and tie, like welcome inside the ballpark, like very like professional how it is now. I think it's going to be a lot more like podcast. Right. Way more laid back, still censored. Like you can't say anything you want. But right. Like it's going to be way more laid back. I think within the next 10, 15 years, I could see it just like, Mm -hmm. You know, like a guy like John Boy Media or some of these bar stool guys, like getting legit mm -hmm. roles with big networks to just kind of like yeah. hang out with the audience as opposed to just telling the audience what's going on. Right. It's like, well, what if, I mean, I've been toyed with the idea of like, what if you had guys just start out, I don't know whether it's on YouTube TV or like a channel and, you know, the game's already on TV. So exactly. you're basically kind of like a radio channel, but you have a visual with the YouTube TV or, or whatever uh, platform and you're calling the game on your own and you kind of start your own following or people are like, damn, I'd rather listen to those guys than the actual people they're paying, you know? I mean, that's so. how like some of the bigger guys have gotten there. Like, like John Boy Media was doing like post game recaps, just like had a camera set up in his house for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. all of it, it was like the Aaron Boone calling the Yankees effing savages or something like that's what came yeah. up a few years ago. Yeah. He never looked back, you know? Right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he's pretty that. big. Yeah, I love that. Like that that type of insight. Like the stuff people want to say but they don't say. Like right. try to like like having to understand it, like how it goes down, but yeah. like being able to say it. Um, yeah, man, I'm I'm with you on that, Loney. It, so that you're talking like similar to like what Peyton and Eli were doing with the the football. Yeah, I mean, similar, because it's like, I mean, technically, it's anybody can kind of set up, their own, you know, cameras and situation and, and channel. And depending on, you know, 
everybody kind of has their own social media following. And, you know, I feel like if you're good enough over time, like people will recognize that, you know, especially, you know, you know, with me playing and you playing and other guys that have, you know, backgrounds, you know, there's, there's connections out there, right? Like, you know, you can, like, so you can have a broadcasting agent eventually and they could reach out to people and be like, oh, they have their own channel or whatever, you know, just kind of like navigating the different, different areas with that. So like having like this type of setup and then the game going at yeah. the same time? Yeah, and I think like the cool thing is is like you don't you can you can choose what game you want to you know call tonight, right? You go, oh, let's watch, let's let's talk about this game tonight, or or shit, let's switch game, let's let's go to another game right now, you know? Or you know, I don't know, just like I feel like you can just play around with it so many different ways. Like, do you see that more of along the lines of like it's got to be well edited? Obviously, it's got to look really good. Yeah, like you'll see with like the bar stool like setups. If you've ever seen one, and they're watching a the game, there's a lot of downtime where they're kind of just like sitting back, taking it in, not saying much. Like, do you mm-hmm. think that's awkward on camera, or would you keep that in? Hmm. Um, I wouldn't want too much downtime because you don't know when people are like watching, and you don't want it to be like, oh, what's going on here? Like, it's too boring, or yeah. they don't have nothing to say. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you, you know, I mean, I, I don't want I wouldn't want to have too much downtime. Yeah. Like I, I watched some of those videos and I'm like, wow, like almost like a hundred thousand people are tuning into this right now, whether it be like an IG live or just like streaming on YouTube. And some of these guys are just sitting back, like not talking for a couple minutes straight. And I'm like, yeah, How are they doing this. How are they this right. successful? They're not saying anything right now. <laughs> yeah. I called it. I called a couple games in AAA. Um, like a few years ago, I did the two the two games, and I don't remember really ever having too much downtime. Like I feel like there was either something to say about the game, or there was something to say, you know, about you know, just just something like about myself, or like I don't know, whatever it was. Like there was always something where it didn't feel too awkward to like throw it in. You know what I mean? And that's the tough thing with commentators today, because like if you're on a national broadcast, you're going to throw Carl Ravage and David Cohn together, probably haven't worked together nearly enough to where they build that camaraderie and that repertoire. Right. They like entertain each other and entertain an audience. Exactly. That's why I think when Charles and Kenny and Shaq, it's like they either all played like around that same era against each other. Like, you know, they have stories. They just, they get it, you know, like they, they know how to feed off each other. And they've been doing it together for years. Like, obviously, yeah. they, they have the experiences and they've known each other for years, but they've sat at that desk for almost a decade plus now, too. Right, exactly. So they know what works, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, and it just – and it always comes off natural. Oh, yeah. I was just say, I think, yeah, they can do that not because they don't they – don't, they don't give a damn. Right? No, they, yeah, exactly. They don't give, yeah. We're, you want me to go? And so why we, like, that needs to happen. We need to create something like that in baseball, right? Similar, I mean, obviously, John Boy Media, um, you know, I don't know what their intention was when they started that, but, um, yeah, having players talk about the game, like, mm-hmm. and more I think about it, if that doesn't happen soon, like, phew. You know, yeah, you know. and it, the nice thing you can always bring in different guests, right? Like, the great thing about this is, like, you said, with like those shows, Peyton and Eli, it's like they can always bring on somebody. Um, maybe it's a certain game during the week, and you have a guy that played for that team back in the day or something. So, I don't know, it's just like always, you know, creating like that's what my that's what I like to do. Like, I like to think about what, what can we create, you know. Right. I don't it want doesn't to do even that. have to be like a bait, like literally someone, like you said, someone that they played with could have been like a role player, platoon mm-hmm. guy. But if he's got a great personality and like the three of them can bounce off each other really well, it's going to be entertaining. Right. Exactly. How did, how did they do that? Were they in the same place or were they doing it like this? Like this. Like this. Yeah. They were just hanging out. <laughs> so Jack, how, do you, how would you, how do you do that? How's that set up? Like, so uh, probably with them. They probably have someone, um, either like a TriCaster, which is like the like the director's program where you can like go to each camera setup. So like if like you were Peyton, I was Eli, James was like Tom Brady or something. We just like put each other, put our frames on top of each other. 
and then you could have like a split screen of the game going on at the same time while you have the Zoom call set up. And I'm pretty sure it's all in um, TriCaster, which is like the giant computer setup that allows you to stream it live while, all, while the game's going on. It's actually a really easy, like simple setup. It's just like a really like expensive software that obviously the big mm -hmm. networks have. But it's well, how, much interesting. You, how much do you think it is? We have one in our studio in Scottsdale that we use. It's close to like $14,000 for the whole setup. And then you have, and I think that's just the setup. And then you have to like program all of, you know, the graphics that you want and pay mm -hmm. for all of like the subtitles or lower thirds or mm -hmm. the things that you want in there. And then you mm -hmm. play around with it. But the actual software is between like 10 and 14, I think. Got it. Got it. Okay. It's worth it though, obviously, if, if it's your life, like podcasting is something I've done for like five, six years and I have the opportunity to use one. But mm -hmm. like, obviously if you're starting out small, like Zoom is perfect because Zoom mm -hmm. doesn't cost anything. Yeah. Yeah. I think people don't expect much, right? If you're just starting out, they're not going to be like, dang, why don't they have this? Why don't they have that? You know, I think they're tuning in to see if it's good or not at first. And then kind of like, like Jalen and Jacoby, they started out really small. Like I remember the, the quality wasn't that great, I don't think. And I don't know if they were just in some like small studio or what. But I remember over time, it feel like it, they progressed, you know. It doesn't happen. Like literally, you were talking about John Boy's intention with his thing, Darnell. Like I think he was just like a Yankee fan growing up outside the Bronx, like somewhere in Jersey. And people caught wind of him and he decided like, Oh, we could turn this into all of baseball, not just like the Yankees. So like, mm. I feel like most of these guys who are successful and, you know, granted like the Eli's and the Paytons and people who are already established who probably asked to do this is completely different, but guys starting out like John boy, like their intentions probably changed multiple times over time as they were. Yeah. Right. I can see that. And I think too, it's like, if you, you try to go this route, if you can get like a, a, a one big name that maybe has a lot of followers or just, you know, whatever it is, I feel like that always kind of helps kickstart it too. Right. You know, like, damn, that guy, you know, they got so-and-so he's got, you know, that's what it is now. Right. Followers. <laughs> so whether you like it or not, that's just, you know, the game we're in. I mean, granted, if you have all of those followers and everything, like you got that, you know, verification, like you obviously are influencing people. Mm -hmm. like yeah that's where i come from like obviously they got somewhere like they don't just right. have a blue check mark or whatever the hell it is on social media for nothing right no it's a good thing you know what i mean i think uh you know there's so many different avenues now for people to to, to make to make money or start a business or whatever it is you know so good it's just like some of you guys like you guys are very into it i feel like a lot of other players just like tune out of content creation and stuff at least like former players or it's either like you're fully in like interested in it or you're just like, mm -hmm. I don't want to see it. I'm not on social media. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> it's cause it's on another, it's on a, another level now. Like it's like you, you even notice like the individual Instagram posts now, like it's like you guys are creating movies, you know what I'm saying? Now high school kids, like, they got to have their own uh, videographer and, like, media team. Like, it ain't just, like, okay, mm -hmm. let's record and just talk. Like, now the level's just gone up. But I really – I like the organic. I like the – you know, there's something, like, just, man, throw together, talk, see, you know, like, if people yeah. like it. And I'm, I'm still just kind of, you know, thinking about this – this other setup and like what YouTube streaming on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube TV is big, you know, or, or channel, whatever. Um, what's that other, there's, um, or like I, what IG live can only be two people talking together. I think you could have up to like four. I think. Yeah. I could be completely wrong, but I think you could have at least three people in an IG live. Mm -hmm. Three people. Okay. Hey, would that be a possibility? Like just do like sit and talk about a game or what? Or better just 
Not well, really. Ideally, you'd want to have the game on screen too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think you'd want to have it on screen just to give people, if they're not able, if they're not in that, you know, district to watch the game in, or in their um, local area, um, that way they could still watch the game, right? And I guarantee you, like Instagram and Facebook, they're all working on that as like the next update too because they're ahead of the curve on that stuff. That, that's something that people would want to see. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I'm, I wonder how you would get the games. Cause you know, like every now, if you want to go pay for out of market, you have to get like a package or whatever. Um. So if you wanted to do it on your own and have it on a screen, I wonder how that would work as well. So you put share screen, and then you have the the video. Oh, I guess. Screen. Oh, share your screen. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you could do that. What do you think, Jack? Is that a possibility? Like if, I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely an easier route to go. I, I definitely see that happening. I'm, I mean, I'm probably sure that they'll simplify it in some way where, like, you could do that while also doing other things. But, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, like, I, like that, I like that idea, man. I really – The non-serious, yeah, non just talk, talk. Yeah. Baseball, baseball talk. Yeah, I could be like, hey, man, I bet you 100 bucks right now, he's going to throw a 3-2 slider. And you're like, no, man, high fastball. And if I win, all right, and you, you Venmoing me, right? And you're showing everybody you venmo me. You know, whatever, like, just yeah. to keep it fun. And, you know, that's, that's the error we're in now. Shit, they're betting on every damn screen. I can't, can't get away from it. Oh, and that'd be like an easy thing where you have bets back and forth and then you have a bunch of bet sponsors that could partner with yeah. the program, whatever it is, whether it's a show or like an IG live, like that's something that someone would easily invest in. Right. Yeah. I feel like that'd be something pretty cool, like something different, right? You're giving people something different too. And, uh, or you could give it to the fan, right? If the fan guesses, you know, the right thing, the right outcome in this inning, maybe they get something. So now they're invested. Yeah. You know, so anytime we're going to see in the next five years or so, like all of these things come to light. Yeah. No, for so sure. Interact so that fans can interact with, how do we do that? Get so the fans can interact, ask questions or what, like what we're talking about. That's what I'm saying. Like IG live, you can do that. And I think mm -hmm. like the next update or a few updates from now, they definitely got to have it to where like two athletes or like two people at ESPN or Fox sports can hop on an IG live while at the same time, have the game on the screen. That way fans mm -hmm. are like commenting throughout on something as simple as Instagram that people could just log on on their phones as opposed to like hopping on a streaming service and watching the game on TV. Mm. It's as easy as yeah. that is like just everybody's on their phone. Right. That's true. Yeah. And you want to make it as easy as possible for people. The interactive. Is the yeah. That's the, that's the way. I want to talk yeah. shit with fans, too. Right. Man. Yeah. You, oh, you want to bet? That's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yeah. your team now. I got this team. I was like, yeah, so. We got to, we got to, we got to, I'm just marinate on that. I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't even, like, now it's not like I'm going to turn on something to listen to anything for with baseball mm -hmm. i think that's what baseball is missing is you know like that saying mm -hmm. i will stay till after the game the basketball game just to see what chuck and them guys got to say about right. whatever happened like i want to see what they're going to say about Kyrie and the fans in boston <laughs> um you know i i, I love I, I love that so it's, that's going to be a continual story of like what how that plays out with that that situation there and gotta love to create some more some more hype, some more like fun shit. Yeah. To, all right to talk shit. That's like do That's that. why I'm so shocked that they went with Michael K and A Rod for that segment. Yeah. Because obviously they're not friends. <laughs> yeah. Well the A Rod thing has always been kind of weird to me, even when he was on the ESPN last year. It just didn't feel, I don't know, like, 
like, wait, what is he saying? Or like, I mean, I've, and I've read that a lot, right? Like, right. Just feels kind of forced. You know? Oh yeah, he's very like business oriented. It seems fake sometimes, but like, yeah, there, there's moments of genuine back and forth between him and like Baskurgeon, but. Mm-hmm. It's good insight, though, man. I, I, yeah. I appreciate, like, he has some good insight hitting and, like, you know, like, you can feel both. So you got to put him and David together, right? Like, yeah. the best thing, whenever I said A Rod, when he was in Boston and they're doing it and the crowd was right. talking shit to him and he was like accepting it. I was like, that's awesome. Like, mm-hmm. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. He was like, yeah, I deserve it. They're, they're all over them, too. <laughs> <It's hilarious. laughs> um, but, yeah, there's no, like, besides, like, him, there's no, like, real insight. Like, he talked, like, the shit Yankees do, he talks about that. Like, man, this mm-hmm. the data, and this was why this wasn't this. And so that part of it, I, I appreciate. Yeah, he has the corporate, the you know, the, it's corporate. It's, it's Yankee. Yeah, you know, but who else? Who else is doing that? Who else is giving that type of insight? No, I mean, I mean, I hate to say it, but if you look around, I mean, it's just a lot of. I don't know if this is because they're old, like a lot of older guys too. That kind of just are like, you know, it's very just stiff and you yeah, know. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you why. Because there's a difference between knowledge. And wisdom, okay? Like, knowledge, like, yeah, I can go talk to yeah. the manager, get some knowledge of what's going on, this and that. And then wisdom of, like, man, I've you've been in this position, you've experienced it, and you're speaking from, um, you know, that point of view. And I think that's mm-hmm. what we need more of, you know, you need both, but the, the wisdom is really, when I say wisdom, that's the stories. Right. Yeah. Your stories. Right. Yeah. That's why people love, I mean, even like Ben Scully, you know, they, he was a storyteller. <laughs> John, John Madden, best yeah. all time. Go. Right. Like, yeah. He had a story for the water boy, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like a story for everyone. And dude, and yeah. Tuned in. Those yep. the damn stories. Would Vin Scully just like come down like during BP sometimes and just like tell stories with the guys? Like not even like baseball related? Not really, because I mean I was there with you know when he was older and I don't think he even showed up to like six thirty. Oh really? Yeah. So I mean, you know, I think his thing was like, all right, I'm good, you know. <laughs> but he was always a nice guy. Like if we did see him, we'd always say, Oh, how's everything? And how's you know? Uh, so he was definitely talkative guy when when he was around i mean that's got to be a cool voice to like play behind for six seven years not how long you were there yeah like, he did it for what 60 years crazy since brooklyn <laughs> it's brooklyn. literally no one else can say that ever no ever again i've seen people with you know Ben Scully tattoos. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I tell you, LA, that place was I'm glad I got to experience that. I played there one time and it was everything and then some. Um, just the atmosphere, man, is mm-hmm. I felt like I was at a club for nine innings. Like it was yeah. rough. Um, yeah. I speak yeah, Hollywood and all that, but yeah, how was that for you? Yeah, no, I loved it. I mean, yeah, I was there from twenty. I was like my whole twenties, really. So you know, I got to you know have a great time with it, and we had a lot of younger guys, you know, that I was playing with too. So, um, and I just think like I didn't understand all the history because I'm from Texas, so like I got there, I didn't, didn't really know who Ben Scully was. And, didn't know too much about the tradition and history, but I learned quick, quickly. <laughs> and um, just, you know, of how invested they are in the team, you know, like Boston is and mm-hmm. New York and all that. So it kind of had that, had that same feeling. Um, and like you said, just kind of how like, it feels like a, like a party, right? 
Like they're they're ready to win. Like like I didn't understand how losing, you know, they come maybe a fan only comes to one game a season. If we lose that game, they're crushed. <laughs> you know? But for as a player, we're always just like, all right, we gotta come back the next day. So it was uh it was pretty special. That's actually a really interesting perspective. Because I know like me growing up going to games, like if my team lost, they'd be like, Oh, that sucks. We're like for you guys, it's just like Oh, we got him again tomorrow, you know? Like, yeah. I, like, very few guys actually, like, looked at it. Like, I know Jeter always said, just, like, if I can't perform today, or I think, I think Kobe said it, too, with the Lakers, was, like, he had, like, that Achilles injury towards the end of his career. It's just, like, take take a break. Like, take a week off. He's like, no, like, what, what if that one person who spent all of their hard-earned money came to see me play and I'm not performing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's- Kobe, last of a dying break. Right, feels like old school mentality. Again, okay, Cal Ripken, Iron Man, Kobe. That that's like no. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, like, even if you did have that, they wouldn't let you do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm just curious. Like being young, I would have lost my mind in L.A. Being young, playing there, like this is Hollywood, man. Like, like yeah. you might see walking down the street. Like, how yeah. do you even kill playing there? Yeah, I mean, I think you see everything, you know, in L.A. You know, if anything, you know, you're not always, like, the big dog. Like, you, you know, like, maybe if you play in Milwaukee or, I don't know, Cincinnati, where it's, like, maybe that's, you know, everything the city is about as far as, you know, entertainment. But actors and musicians and, you know, entrepreneurs and, and all that. So, um, you know, you come across those people, obviously, at the stadium or, or in different ways. But, you know, you know Darnell as far as playing, like, it's, it's, it can be a 10 to 12 hour day, right? So a lot of times, you know, you're just tired. <laughs> like, you just want to go home, get some sleep, because you're playing pretty much every day. Um, you know, I, I think the time. I wasn't we tired, were... tired back then like that. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm tired now. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I can't do it. Like, and I wasn't yeah. tired back then. I ain't going home. I ain't going to sleep, you know? No, you're right. I mean, I think it was more so, like, like a lot of times when we had off days or day games, it was a lot, you know, there was just a lot more things going on too, right? A lot more opportunities. So, um, but, you know, we definitely took advantage of, you know, you know, having our fun and being able to, uh, ex- you know, explore LA, right? See what it's all about. You know, people, oh, why don't you guys wear these clothes for us? Or, you know, hmm. I'm here to this premiere or whatever it is. Right, right. So, you know, yeah. Did they give you guys like, uh, was there like a development classes and stuff like, you know, how you carry yourself in, in Hollywood? Because uh, again, you, like you said, this mm-hmm. is different from Milwaukee. Or this is different from Colorado. Like this is, you know, so mm-hmm. did someone take you under your wing? Well, how, how they do that? How that work? Well, I remember it was like MLB. We had like a um, big kind of like seminar retreat thing in Virginia for young, player, like young players, just as far as like mm-hmm. handling yourself you know, in the big leagues, um, which I thought was pretty good. Um, you know, yeah, I think so. that's as a whole, though, that's like as the league. I'm talking about yeah. L.A. In, in L.A. <laughs> I'm talking about movie, movie, movie premieres. You're talking, it's, it's, it's a different vibe. Right. You know, it's, it's, yeah. It's easy to get caught up in something in L.A. Yeah. So I remember. Like someone like take you under your wing. I remember like Jeffrey Hammonds. My mm-hmm. first time with Orioles, the first thing to like, oh, B, you know, don't have the girls in their lobby, B, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, who's doing that? Like, <laughs> if you have someone like that, they're like, it's like, hey, man, this is how you want to handle yourself out here. I feel like, like, Juan Pierre was a real good, um, you know, mentor to be around, real even keel, real hard worker, you know, you know, but had a sense of humor, you know, we would still hang out after games. Um, so I thought he was a real good guy to be around, um, you know, but a lot of times, you know, as we got into the league in the two or three, four years in, it was a lot of young guys too. Like we were kind of the older guys in a way. Um, so we were definitely figuring it out on our own too. Um, but I think we had a good balance, you know what I mean? I think we had a really good balance of, of putting our work in, but also, you know, having fun. Um, so just being able to, to do that. I don't think anybody really ever had to like, you know, hey man, you need to be doing it, you know. <laughs> so I think just the way our personalities were and the, what we showed, um, you know, was pretty good to to some of the older guys. 
What, was, was that it, obviously because again, like you played for that wasn't your longest in, in Los Angeles, but like playing a little bit in Boston, New York with the Mets. Like, the, like there's a lot of like big city cultures there. Probably big expectations, you know. Yeah. Maybe not so much with the Mets. I don't know, but like, <laughs> was, like were they similar cultures of just like we want to win every single year? As opposed oh, yeah. to it's just going to be a breeze this season. Don't worry about it. No, no, for sure. I mean, like you said, those big cities like that, the big markets, um, they have that history. And like the fans, the fans are, you know, like I said, they're paying their ticket. They, they want to win, right? And I mean, even though I was in Tampa for three years, even though it's not a big market, you know, we still expected to win. Like, you know, even though you don't spend a lot of money there, the teams, um, we still have this um, winning culture. And I remember, you know, we went to the playoffs my first first year there. Um, so I feel like everywhere I everywhere I played, it's always been about winning, you know. And, and if we don't win, it, it's it's a it's a letdown. Mm. What would you say is like the biggest? Um, I don't know the most devastating moment, moment of your career, I'd say, because like there's probably like a lot of things, like a lot of pressurized moments of like mm-hmm. having to perform on a high level every day, especially in Los Angeles when you're expected to make the playoffs almost every year, which you did almost every year. And mm-hmm. then I know you were part of that big deal with Boston that sent like who was it? It was like Crawford, Beckett, yeah. Adrian Gonzalez, all those guys. I remember that trade going down like you know, getting thrown out of a game for losing your temper. Like, what's, like, yeah. the most, like, I guess, like, stress moment that, you, that you've had? Right. See, Boston wanted me that bad. You know, they had to give up all those guys. A lot of a lot of prospects right there. Yeah, you know, I was about to be a free agent, but they took the chance, you know. So. Listen up to Boston, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, it's funny. On a personal level, I remember my first year, I actually had – nine RBIs one game and the next game I didn't start <laughs> so that that was my first game I was like wow okay this is gotta you gotta keep pushing you know don't let that be a setback for you um so I did you know I ended up you know I just played when they told me to right and I understood that you know it's still a progression um you know I think as far as like overall um Probably, probably when I got released by the Rays, but you know, at the time I felt like, all right, you know, okay, maybe it's not the right fit, or you know, I had a, I think uh, two injuries that, yeah, two injuries the year before, and the Mets ended up picking me up after you know a few weeks in AAA, but at the time it was just kind of like, wow, I've never been released before after you know, I don't know, what. Since 2002, I got drafted, and that was in 2015. So, yeah. Was it with the Mets when you when you walked away finally? Just like, yeah, the Mets was my last year in the big leagues, and I came back with the Rangers in spring training the next year, but I didn't have a good spring. Um, did a little AAA with Detroit, Atlanta, and uh, yeah, I didn't. You know, my kids were getting a little older, so it was just, just kind of hard to be away and play that whole game of like where are you gonna where are we gonna be and where you know it was just it's harder that's gotta yeah we've had that conversation multiple times too like a lot of guys have multiple stints other play like I'm trying to think like Jerry Harrison played for a lot of teams right yeah and like he probably yeah. had that conversation like time in and time again just like yeah we're packing up again I yeah, mean, I hope you didn't get too close with anybody because <laughs> home for long. Yeah, he gave me some pretty good valuable uh, valuable lesson. Um, I remember when he was with when I was playing with him, he's like, "Yeah, I could have went to Pittsburgh and been a starter, but my son like lives here or lives close, so I'm gonna play here." And at the time, I was just like, because I didn't have any kids, so I was just like, "Oh man, like you're not gonna be a starter in Pittsburgh, like you know, you know what I mean?" But now, but I get it, you know what I mean? I understand for sure. How's that? How's the transition been? Because I know, like, there's no, there ain't, they don't give you a blueprint. No. Uh, how you transition, and there ain't no, no, you can't, you can't do <laughs> that. So, like, how, how, how's that been for you? Yeah, I was, I wasn't the most domesticated dude coming into it, you know. So, uh, definitely had to learn a lot on the fly, and 
just kind of understand, you know, especially when you're married, it's like, all right, you're one with this person now, right? So now, it's like, all right, got to think about this person and, you know, what would, you know, what would they want or, you know, you know what, what are their feelings in this situation, right? So now it's not all about you. It's, you know, when I was playing, it was all about me, right? It's like, all right, what do I got to do to prepare? What do I got to do to, you know, get the most out of, you know, my situation? So now it's like, all right, you got these other people to think about. And, you, you know, I enjoy it, you know what I mean? But sometimes, uh, like you said, that transition just can be tough, whether it's maybe you don't know a few things or, you know, you're just like, wait, should I still be playing? You know? Right. So there's a lot of different uh, things that can swirl around in your head for sure. Yeah, I don't think people realize that, you know, like you said, like you're playing baseball, like that's what I've been doing all my life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, from, you know, that, that, that mindset from the minor leagues to the big leagues. And it's like, yeah, man, it's, it's almost, it's a, I tell it like, this isn't real, right? Cause it's, everything's about you and you have someone to do everything for you. It was like, it was definitely the gift and the curse for me. Like it was a double whammy for me of transition from baseball, divorce. You know what I figured out? Like, man, I really didn't know how to do anything. <laughs> like realizing like all the stuff that was done for you like and the um i think the biggest thing is the the scheduling right in baseball you're mm -hmm. always on the schedule you're here at this time everything's scheduled out for you and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden like all right figure that figure it out yourself especially if you you know you get into or you're an entrepreneur you're in a business like mm -hmm. I mean, that's the hardest thing right and so, yeah you know you have some routines or systems in place that kind of, you know, help you stay on track or, or you know, mm -hmm. what, what is life like for you now after playing baseball and you have kids? Yeah. I mean, I think I realized and this is just really recently of what I have to do in order to be a productive human being, you know, and, and it's pretty simple. Like, you know, a lot of the things you hear are just in normal everyday life. I got to get sleep, right? I got to get at least eight hours for myself. That's what works for me. Uh, I got to eat pretty healthy most of the time. You know, you know, every once in a while, I'll eat whatever, right? So, you know, you hear those things in different areas, um, you know, different areas of how to be productive. But, you know, when I, when I do those things, now I'm in a good mindset, right, of, you know, for the day, to attack the day. You know, now maybe I'm not as irritated if my kids get on my nerves or, you know, I'm, I'm not like in a, in a different mood if something doesn't go right, you know, whatever I'm doing. Um, and, and I think like the, the latest thing I've been trying to really attack is, is learning, right? Whether it's, you know, going back to school. I had, I had gone back to school online and then I had stopped and now I'm about to get back into that. You know what I mean? Um, uh, you know, becoming an agent. I became a sports agent. Okay. So, yeah. So that was that was something that I think helped me a little bit. You know, I stayed in the game, but I also had a really flexible schedule. So that worked for me. Um, coaching my kids, like I'm managing both teams. That's a that's almost an everyday, you know, commitment there. Practices and games, right? So I think it's really trying to stay busy, but you got to find, you know, the things you like. You know, I think sometimes maybe Darnell, you can attest to this. I think sometimes after we're done playing, I like, go, oh, shit, who are we? But then is that okay? You know, do, or do, even though maybe I only like this, this and that, and I can't do this, I can't do all these other things, but am I happy with, am I fine with that? You know what I mean? And it's okay. If you're happy with it, you're happy with it. If you want to change it, go change it. But, you know, I think sometimes guys get a little confused of like, oh, I have to be this kind of guy or I have to be this kind of guy. It's like, no, like, go do, go do what makes you happy, <laughs> you know? Yeah, interesting. I think not only athletes, but a lot of people, like, some people, we don't know what makes us happy, you know? Yeah. Like, like you said, like, uh, we've been playing baseball all our lives. Mm -hmm. And, we had something to, we knew how, like, like a gauge, right? Like you knew if you were doing well or doing bad. <laughs> and some of these other things, like you don't know, like there's no, like 
mark, you're like, man, am I doing okay? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no feedback. Right. So yeah, that, 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 that's very interesting. I like, so the agent, like, are you doing that on a day-to-day -day basis or yeah, how did you, how did you decide to get into, get into that? Yeah. So, I mean, like, I knew I kind of wanted to stay in the game in a way. I just didn't know which way, you know, I think if I didn't have kids at this age, maybe I would explore possibly coaching or, you know, you know, I don't know, front office type stuff. Um, but with my kids being so young, I know I wanted to be around and like coach them and, and do all that. So I thought, okay, maybe the agent thing would route would work just because, you know, you're pretty much, you know, with this company, you're pretty much on your own as far as like, all right, if you want guys, you, you go get them, you know, you try to go and see them. Right. Or, you know, a lot of, a lot of times it's through social media, which is nice. So, you know, I was exploring that and I started that a few years ago. Uh, Justin Turner is our biggest client. Um, you know, we have Tommy, Pam, and a few other guys. So, interesting. I want to talk yeah. to you more about that. I like that because yeah. it's been on my mind for for a minute now. Mm -hmm. I just I'm the same way. Like the game is what I, this is what I know. You know, this is, yeah. this is my, obviously my first love, or not. You know, first love, but. When I transitioned out of the game, I knew whatever I did in baseball, like I need, I couldn't put the uniform on, right? It wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be able to like trans. If I got the uniform on, like man, I'm gonna play. Like I still think I can play. Yeah, that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. So, but now you know, obviously, being able to impact other people's lives and help them fulfill their dreams and still be in the game um, mm -hmm. is, is really the ultimate, the the goal. Right? Yeah. And I, I think there's something too about just, you know, giving, whether it's your time or, or your money or, or your insight, you know, like a lot of people, if they can't figure out, you know, what that next step is, you know, maybe they can start with giving whatever area they feel like they can give. Um, you know, with my kids, like there's something about, you know, if I bring them a Legos for their birthday, like they're just so excited. I'm like, dang, that made me feel good. You know, <laughs> or, you know, if I see someone that I feel like, you know, needs, I don't know, whatever, a hundred dollars, I don't know, you know, just something where I felt like that really made an impact on their life. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, that's what you see when these, you know, you see with billionaires, right? Once they get to a certain level, like, what are they doing? They're, they're building schools and trying to save the world, right? So it's kind of interesting how, like, people, you know, People want to keep making more money and more money, but you see the top, you know, um, the wealthiest people in the world, it's like they're giving a lot away, right? Because they know, you know, what that can do um, for the world. Yeah. yeah. The energy flow going. Like, when, yeah. so when did you learn that? When did you realize that? I mean, I think having kids definitely helped me get to a higher level with that. I think before it was more of like, like when I played for the Dodgers, you know, like, or you go visit like the hospital and you know that it's a good thing to do, but you're not, I'm not thinking like of the impact too much. You know, I'm just like, oh man, that's sad, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, I'm glad I could help. But then it's like, okay, now I've gotta go play baseball, right? Or, you know, now I gotta do this. But I think when, you, when I'm done playing, when I get done, you have more time to think about it and kind of be like, okay, maybe I want to go this route or maybe I want to go this route. Like it's really trying to figure out, you know, what my, what, what are my strengths and then use those strengths to see how I can impact other people. Do you think you could learn that at any stage in life though? Or do you feel like, I mean, I think you obviously can learn that at any stage in life, but like, let's say mm -hmm. we get you back in high school in Texas, right? You're not mm -hmm. making any money to play baseball. Then you get that first big offer out of school, right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously, the farther along you go in your career, the more money you're making. And then once you have those finances to help other people, like you said, mm -hmm. like billionaires starting the foundations or wanting to save the world, you know, like, mm -hmm. do you think that that is something that you could obviously have the mindset to have even at a young age as a kid? Like, even if, like, like your kids, like, really young, like, whether it be, like, teenage or like even like 10, 11, 12 year olds have that mentality, like this is what we need to do. But 
but at yeah. the same time, if you don't have like, like I said, like the finances in order to help that stuff, like, can you really have that mentality? Yeah. I think like there's people I know that they don't, they don't have a lot of money at all, but they're still helping maybe with their time yeah. or, or maybe it's five dollars to someone, you know, for 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 something they need needed. Um, but I think it's starting with the foundation, right? When you're younger, and really understanding to like, an ego is good in the ways that okay, it maybe helps you become a great baseball player or helps you great become great at something. But taking the ego out, you know, when it comes to what's important, right? So I think I just think you know you get to a level financially and you're just like, all right, I don't need 10 cars. I don't need five homes. I'd rather be doing something different with that money. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's the mentality a lot of guys should take, you know, especially, um, you know, guys that make a lot of money when they're young. You know, you always hear these stories. I'm like, God, how'd this guy go broke? Like, there's no, like, there's no way that should happen. You know what I mean? So I think it's, um, I know it's so sad because I'm just like, how? Like that money should have been making money, right? Um, so I think it's just balancing your life too, like having a balance. I had to learn that, you know, like you said, Darnell, you know, baseball, it's like bam, 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 like we're out of balance a lot too, right? So it's really just trying to be like, all right, let me put some money away to make more money. Let me, okay, I want to buy a decent house. I want to buy a decent car. Like that's fine. And then, okay, maybe this is for a little giving, you know, just kind of, this is for, you know, retirement. So it's just really like, you're, you're, you're living life, you're exploring so many different areas, you know what I mean? Which, uh, which I think has helped me, so. When I was eight, 18, I got my, got money, I wasn't thinking about none of that stuff you just said, man. <laughs> Let me just tell you right now. Um, right. And so, However, you learn that or got that experience and, uh, and learn that along the way is, mm -hmm. is, is, is really beautiful, right? Because they weren't, they don't teach that in school, right? They weren't. No. I, only, well, I, I signed out of high school, right? And so, yeah. I was this, this Deepak shop, I was reading this Deepak shopper book, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And that's really mm -hmm. about all the stuff that you're talking about, right? Giving. You know, be a good giver, be a good receiver, and vice versa. And mm -hmm. really, I think the biggest thing to learn is like, yeah, like you watch people that um, are financially well off and they, they give, they're good givers, right? right? And so they just keep that flow, that energy flow coming back. And, um, but again, I didn't learn that in high school. I didn't learn that in baseball. I didn't learn that, um, you know, obviously I grew up going to church and I'm talking about, you know, tithing, and offering. Um, you know, it's really about your intention and why you're doing it. We don't, I don't know what you're doing, using the money for, or what, you know, but now I understand it more now that I'm part right. of the concept of it, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I think, you know, in this world, we're, I mean, who knows for how long, but it's like everything's about us, right? Like that's kind of what the world tells us. So I think we have this feeling of, oh, we're still trying to impress people, right? It's like, oh, I got to buy the most expensive shirt. I got to buy the most expensive car. But why not buy the smartest car? Why not buy the smartest thing? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, like 18, I don't. You don't want it. I wouldn't, you know, you said, I ain't thinking about that. I'm buying what, yeah. what's on TV, I'm what I'm seeing. Like, so basically, like, I didn't come for money, right? So you get, all of a sudden you get $2 million, like, how do you know what to do with $2 million? You don't know what to do, right? And then no. you got a bunch of people coming at you that you never met. Like, so it's, um, I really say, like, like the team around you is really important, right? Your mm -hmm. team, you're only as good as your team. And, um, you know, even watching guys when they get drafted, I know, um, you know, scouts, is, you know, they look at that stuff, like who's in your circle, who's, who's around them, right? Because that's right. really, um, to me, I think it's going to be the separator of that kid developing and getting to the big leagues, right? Because mm -hmm. the more that we can simplify life off the field, um, the easier, you know, the game would be. But 
you know, I'm school the hard now. I had to learn all this stuff along the way. And so now that's what, you know, it's really want to impact other people with that experience. Now I'll tell you how you, I'll, I'll, you want me, I'll, I'll tell you how you go lose all that money. You tell me how much time yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how you do that. <laughs> yeah, if I would have been in, if I would have been in LA, like, you know, twenties or whatever, like that money would have gone even, even faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, having that, that, um, that mature outlook, uh, the sooner, the, the sooner, the better. Mm -hmm. also, man, we're all on different paths and different journeys and, and learning, you know? Right. Put their hand on that, that stove and like, oh, it's hot. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Like, yeah. Man, I had to hit rock bottom, like rock bottom to where like, you know, a place where I never want to feel this again. Right? And I really mm -hmm. think that's the change comes. Where you like, you get to a place where real change, like sustainable change, you're like, I never want to feel that again. Exactly. That's you. You hit it right on the head. That's exactly it. I don't want to feel that feeling again. You know what I mean? Um, and I think for me, like coming out when I was younger, I think what helped me not go too crazy was I never felt like I was the best at anything. So what I mean is I never felt like I was the strongest player on the team, the fastest you know, maybe the smartest, you know, but I always felt like I was pretty good at everything. So I was like, oh shit, I gotta get, I gotta be, the, I gotta get better in every aspect now, mm. right? Cause like, man, I'm not, I see this guy on my team, he's way better than me at this, he's way better than me. Like I could judge, I could gauge that, you know? So to me, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. I ain't done nothing yet, you know? So I think that's kind of what helped motivate myself um, so I think if people try to take that approach, it can maybe help them, you know, like, like you said, with signing bonuses, right? It's like, all right, that's, you're really getting paid for what you did previously and what they think you're going to do. So you ain't done nothing yet mm. after the fact, right? So I think it's really like, you know, trying to, you know, be smart and be like, all right, set this, a portion of this money aside for later, spend some of it, and then just work my ass off. You, I mean, you see it with like the big contracts, like even like 10 years ago, like the 10 year deals were 350, whatever, like almost nine times out of 10, none of those guys lived up to it. You know, they got paid for what they did, but then moving mm -hmm. forward, they didn't really live up to anything that they were getting paid. Just to like throw a few names, like Albert Pujols, you know, some would say did not live up to that deal that he got with Anaheim, right? right. Maybe because he was he was getting older. Uh, Robinson Cano in Seattle lasted like three or four years there, you know. Like there's some of these guys, you know, A-Rod obviously went through his whole debacle, that final big deal he had with the Yankees, you know. Like it, I mean, you're probably talking smaller deals, which is still a ton of money. But you look at like those big time deals, like none of those guys, after they got the big money, really lived up mm -hmm. to that money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you get paid for like, you know, what you've done and then they're hoping if it's like a 10 year deal, maybe they get, they get five solid years out of you. I think they feel like, you know, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. No matter what you do, it's the Someone's gonna have something to say, right? Like that's what I say. Can you really live up to that? Because just like uh, it's like the strike, right? Like man, millionaires are making all this money and they don't want to play, and like not like and it's like yeah, we want to play. Um, you know, yeah, I can I can imagine what it's like having a deal like that and the expectations, right? Because that, that happened to me, but. I think there's something to be said for like you know I hear what you're saying, um, James, about staying grounded, right? You gotta, how do you stay grounded? How do you stay grounded when you get this big signing bonus? How do you stay grounded when you sign this big contract? Um, I know I heard you say I, I never, I, I hadn't done anything, right? I didn't, I want to keep where I had this white belt mentality, right? Mm -hmm. I'm keep getting better, and I think. 
you know, that's a that's another skill in itself, or you know, a skill, or um, you know, you think it's something that is just in you, born in you to, to do that. I, I, I look at Jeter, and you know, I don't know what he did off the field or whatever, but I, you know, just look how he carried himself. He's always stayed grounded, right? And I went yeah. and played over there for two seconds. And I'm like, I really appreciate it. Like he treated everyone the same way, right? Right. Yeah. And then it's like this weird thing, right? And I never understood it in life. It's like, depending on how much money you have, you, you treat someone differently. Like, I don't, I just didn't really, you know, just didn't really. You know, you know how it is in baseball, though. Oh, like, no. They're a contract, they kind of like, yeah. team, man, like they don't treat, they treat this guy, they, some of them do. The good yeah. ones don't, but you know how it is in the game of baseball. Mm -hmm. no, I get it. In life, like, yeah, you know, I get it. I mean, this it's, guy, you better not sit this, you better not sit here on the plane or what, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. No, I get it. You know, I get it. And, you know, there's, you know, something to it, but as far as just like being, you know, a good person, right? Or just being able to like, you know, talk to someone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You know, I just always felt like it's like shit. There's always gonna be someone more money than you, right? Pretty much, <laughs> unless you're the richest person in the world. So, you know, I always just felt like I just felt like all right. There's more. There's more. There's like you know, let's let's keep going, right? Like you said, that white belt mentality of like, oh, like I'm 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 not stopping here, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I, I, easier said than done. Like, I tell you, like, shoot, yeah. They say it ain't going to, like, money don't change or whatever. Like, yeah, it changed me. I didn't have money. I was 18 and gave me $2 million. Like, yeah, it changed me. Like, I had all kind of people come at me that I didn't know. Like, there's so many different ways that it, it changed, right? And I think uh, the big thing for me, like, probably, like, 99, my seven-year pro ball, my mom passed away, right? And I didn't, again, there was no blueprint of how you heal from that, how you go through healing or um so man I would, I, the way i look back and i dealt with that i was like man i was just going out when the money if i wasn't feeling good like i'd go buy something thinking that's gonna mm -hmm. make me feel better like temporary like right 24 hours later like man okay i'm back there like no. still feel like shit. um so and that's why i'm really you know, that's like this, this, this mindfulness and the stuff that I learned, like getting out of the game, mm -hmm. uh, became my comp, like, like that was my competition, like competing against myself, right? And, um, you know, basically when I say that, man, this saved my life, right? And this noticing, giving my, creating this space between, um, you know, reacting, you know, what, what my natural habits would be and being able to respond, like, okay. Instead of doing this, I'm going to do this instead, All right? Um, and again, that's why I'm like, passionate about helping others and teaching others about this, mm -hmm. this stuff, like creating this space, right? Just think of it as, it's just a space, right? Of taking a pause and, okay, do this or this, right? Right. I have my kids spill some over there. When I yell at my kid, what the hell are you doing, this, that, like, they don't respond better to that. I don't feel nope. good. So, nope. okay, let me, if I'm calm and I'm like, okay, yeah. I need to do a clean. Like, I just found like they respond better to that. I feel better about that. Mm -hmm. And it's, we, we, we're, in, we're in a better space doing this. And this is this, this space of like creating that space and this, this mindfulness or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this is my life yeah it's, i mean yeah it sounds like a you know growth that you know that the growth that you've been on is shaping you into just a better you know better person right that's what it sounds like um and i think there is something like to having kids man like there's it's a feeling you have unless you grew up maybe it was like a big family or, or you took care of people that you really cared about like, because I didn't, you know what I mean? Like, I never really had that super close connection. You know, I mean, I was always good with my parents and my coaches and all that. 
But as far as like, oh shit, like, man, I, I care. I really do care about this. You know what I mean? So, it, you know, it kind of just starts to change your mindset of maybe what's important and, all right, maybe I should do this in this situation, you know? Um, so it's definitely, uh, there's definitely a lot of growth in that. <laughs> Did you guys ever have like teammates or see anybody like you played with them prior to having kids and then like post having kids, like how their whole demeanor changed? Like you ever play with someone who's just like became a different person after having kids? I've seen it a little bit. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. For all the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I say, I tell people like that's the, like the only thing that's going to change your life instantly. Yeah. Kid comes and um, like for me, understanding like love, like that was the first time I was like, man, like, yeah. Seeing a child come out and then like you see these, these characteristics and stuff of like yourself in them and um, like, unconditional, you know? And that's yeah. for me, that was that was the turning point in my career, man. Like that, that alone was when that happened. And you know, playing for I was playing for something bigger than myself. And so I think that like see a lot of guys, yeah, man. Like especially with baseball and the mindset you the mindset you have as a professional athlete, right? Like, yeah, man, it's it's all about yourself. You, 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 like, what do I got to do to get to the next level? What do I got to do to keep my job? What do I got to do to be in the lineup? What do I got to do? And then, um, you know, having someone else that depends on you was, uh, you know, I was able to come home and like, man, I don't care if you went four, four, oh, four, four. Mm -hmm. right? And so it helped me decompress because I never learned how to decompress. I never learned how to let go of, you know, probably the most important thing you can learn as a baseball player or anyone. Like, how do I leave this here and then be this? Like, get this compartmentalize these things. And so having a kid kind of just forced me to do that. Um, oh, so how, how old are your kids, James? They're, they're six and eight. So did they, they saw, they were around a little bit during, while you were playing? My eight-year-old was, yeah, I probably didn't really remember too much, but he was around. Um, how did that affect you, like, in your game and, like, how, you know? Yeah, no, like you said, you go, like, 0 for 4, 4 for 4, you know, you come home and that your whole mood can change, right? Um, for the best. And then, I think it was harder with my wife sometimes, like, before we had kids. You know, you come home over four, and she'd be like, oh, "You want to talk about it?" I'm like, "No, I don't want to talk about it." You know, right. and she yeah. started, getting, and then eventually, like, she would start to kind of feel type of way of like, <laughs> you, don't, "You don't want to express, you don't want to talk," and I'm like, "No, why would I want to talk about that?" You know, but it was that's that's a whole nother you know situation. Um, so the wives and girlfriends, they don't get a handbook either. Like, man, how you can deal with this this person here when they come home. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it's 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 unreal. And I'm like, I think back to like how like that roller coaster and no matter what anyone says, you go for twenty, you go for twenty or whatever it is, like man, it's a different feeling. That food tastes different. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I don't want to do no. Like and um Yeah. Yeah, I know that the, the rate of like relationships and people staying together in baseball is, I don't know what it is right now, but I, I can understand like why, right? Yeah, I think it's the worst among sports, actually. I think it's the biggest breakup rate, among, you know. Um, I don't know maybe if it's like the amount of games or just, you know. I, I mean, a lot of people get with their spouses really early when they're young too. I don't know, you know, I don't know what all the factors are. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. You know what I mean? It's definitely tough. Um, and with baseball is a hitter too, right? You're, you're not getting a hit. Even, you know, if you're hitting three out of 10, you're doing great. Right. And so that means you, a lot of failure. Yeah. So, you know, when you're doing that, 
like you said, you're trying to keep your head above water in the big leagues because you're not trying to go back to the minors. So you're just like, oh shit, like, okay, I think I, if I do good this week, right? Or if I do good next week, then I think I'll stay. Or, you know, just especially if you're early in your career. Um, so you go home, like, it's like, no, it's like, you don't, you don't usually, even when you do good, like, it's not necessarily something you're trying to go home about, you know, broadcast, right? It's like, yeah. all right, go to bed, wake up, do it tomorrow. <laughs> you're nine RBIs and then you're not in the line the next day. And then, Man. <laughs> No one teaches you how, how, how do you deal with that? Like, you know, and so there's just so many things that, you know, like mentally, I didn't practice any mental skills. I wasn't doing, I didn't fail in high school. I didn't know how to deal with failure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you know, the, the, the mental side of it, you spent so much time practicing the physical side of, of the game. Mm -hmm. not understanding like we can strengthen, you can do the same thing for your mind and, you know, it's probably the most important thing, like how you, you're going to respond to adversity. It's like the right. biggest thing. Like, and, and I think, too, like knowing what adjustments you're supposed to make because you never you get to big leagues, but well, you've never been there before. So now you're like, wait, if I, when I, if I start struggling or when I start struggling, do I change my timing? Do I change, you know, is it, you know, is it my leg kick or – is it my is it my thought process of what pitch you know I'm ready for? So it's really like you're like you're learning on the fly because you're not sometimes you're not really sure and if you don't have you know maybe the right coaches around you and, and all that it makes it a lot harder. You know I'm sure you've been around where like you didn't always maybe have the best hitting coaches around right like or maybe someone that didn't understand you know what you were trying to do or what you were going through right Cause, you know I, I think. You know, teams should have more than one or two hitting coaches, right? You got what, twelve hitters on a team up usually. So you know, golfers all have their own coach, <laughs> right? That's pretty much like where the game's gone. I think everyone has, every guy has their own guy now, and yeah, you know what you said, like the the you know the data and stuff that we're seeing in the game. Like, yeah, you have the data, but this doesn't help you make an adjustment, right? We right. Don't, like knowing what the adjustment is, yeah, you know, there might not even be an adjustment, right? And we can we can overcorrect. Exactly. Uh, yep. You're like, you're like, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that. I'm like, yeah, but the pitch is already past me, so I don't know if that was the right solution. You know what I mean? Um, and then, like I said, you always had the success leading up to these, leading up to the big leagues. So you're like, well, shit, I always had the success doing it this way. But these guys are throwing like 96 mile hour sinkers now and, you know, sliders at 90. So it's like, you know, you're really trying to, you know, figure it out. Would you say that you were a uh, big fish in a small pond in high school? Because, again, like you were like num ranked number one, I think, right? When you were pitching in high school, like your team. Like mm -hmm. I know Darnell's just like hitting like 700 in high school and then goes <laughs> to the leagues and it's like, oh, wow, everybody's this good. Yeah. In here. Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, we were number one in the country my senior year. Um, you know, I think I hit Where is this, James? Where? The school? Uh Elkins in um Missouri City, Texas. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone else from your team, did they go on to play? We had a lot of guys play in the minors, and then Matt Carpenter for the Cardinals. Okay. Or is he still? Who is he playing right now? The Rangers, I think, or maybe minors. I don't know. Um, and this other guy named Chad Huffman, he actually got called up to the Yankees. I remember Huffman. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up okay. a Yankee man, so I, I know that name. Yeah, yeah. So me, Chad, and Matt were all on the same team. You were pitching, and were you playing first back then? First and pitching, yeah. Gotcha. I guess another thing that helped me, I thought I was going to be a pitcher. I was topping out at 94, you know, left-handed. So that was another thing. When I got dropped out as a hitter, I'm like, I was scared. I was like, man, I can't, I can't, like, mess this, you know, mess this up. Or, you know, I didn't feel, like, real confident going into it if this was going to work out. So I think that humbled me for sure, you know. Did you ever think about 
trying to pitch at any point? I did, you know. Um, I would try to, like, ask occasionally, I think, during blowout games. But I think the coaches said they'd get fired if they pitched me. Or something. So you never got that opportunity in, like, an 11-1 to game in the eighth? Well, finally, the ones I was, like, 34 in AAA, when I went back, <laughs> I got to pitch an inning. No runs. One hit. It's tough to hit. Well, I guess you were probably throwing decent heat at that point. Or were you just <laughs> phoning it in? It's like 88, 89. Yeah. See, it, like, who, who was it the other night? Like, Rhett Phillips with the Rays was throwing, like, 45 in the bottom of the <laughs> top of the eighth inning, striking guys out. Yeah. There was a guy from the Padres one year they brought in. He was only like 94. He was a catcher. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, Chris Davis was throwing gas with the, a splitting. We faced, we faced him. That day. Yeah. Which the black one or the white one? White dude, Baltimore. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember he stuck out Adrian Gonzalez on three pitches. You know, I'm, I'm the next hitter. I'm going <laughs> to strike out, you know. Well, I didn't strike out. I ground into a double play to end the game. <laughs> oh right? So it's like, is that even fair as a hitter? Because you're like, man, eh, but like, what are you doing? He no, teed off on you, Darnell. Yeah. Huh? He teed off on you, didn't he, at Fenway? Adam Jones, two home bomb. Got me. Damn. <laughs> Thinking like I'm gonna throw it, you know, kind of up and away. Like yeah. know, he just he just went out there and just hooked it all over the monster. <laughs> but yeah, you're gonna give up a, a, a bomb. Yeah, that's the one you want. Yeah, I give one up to him. I still, I have a bat actually from uh, Matt Suey. I saw, I saw Matt Suey off. He signed a bat for me. Broken bat. What a guy he is. <laughs> Will you sign this broken bat for me? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one. Oh, I, I love that guy. Just for that right there. That's funny. Wow. What, what was the context of that? Like, why did you ask him to sign a broken bat? Good question. Like, I'm trying to – how did I even know his bat was broken, right? But somehow I did. Maybe someone on the team told me, and, yeah, he signed He signed the bat. Huh. What a guy. Little, little cutter got in on him. <laughs> <laughs> Godzilla. But, so, man, I'm, I'm really just – I love the thought of – that that deal like we were talking about earlier with the the games and and talking through the games and I want to keep uh, like talking about that and figuring out like how we can play around with that just to mm-hmm. just play around with it like you don't even have to be anything serious but right with how we can get the game on there and just talk through the game or maybe you can just start with like three innings or you know whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's what people are going to appreciate more, the non-serious factor of all of it, kind of just like hanging out, talking about it with your buddy. Yeah. Like, hey, man, I'm about to go get some lemonade. You, you take the next two outs. You know what I mean? Or like, I don't know. I'm taking just, a piss break. Why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Just like you said, like you're at, if you're at home, treat it like you're at home, right? 